Salibonani Mlikavoto. Greetings and welcome to the Girls Table podcast where we talk about issues around electoral processes and governance issues. In my podcast today, I am talking to Sharon Mauti, a social and economic justice ambassador and a community resource monitoring agent with Zimcode. Our conversation is centered on gender sensitive budgeting, focusing on marginalized communities those are women children and people living with disabilities and my first question to you sharon is how does the budgeting process address the specific needs and challenges faced by these marginalized communities basically in addressing the specific needs and challenges faced by marginalized communities um i can't really say we have had a budget which has um really um, addressed the specific needs um, and challenges of marginalized communities basically because um, of lack of um, representation and or lack of um, information specifically in the marginalized communities right Um, marginalized communities can use specifically um, the budget consultation meetings to air out their their needs, to speak to their needs, to say what they want the budget to look like, um, to say what they want um, the the, the budget to address. And um, unfortunately, our information dissemination is usually poor around the budget making process and or around the budget consultation processes because it's either they are short notice or it's either they are found on platforms which do not really reach uh, marginalized communities you could find this on whatsapp whatsapp means someone should have access to data someone should have access to wi-fi or a smartphone and um you could most of most of the times you find these on facebook on you know these are the ads where where, where they are put but for 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 something which um speaks to um um really um reaching the marginalized communities we don't really have that kind of because even within the people even within the 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 spectrum of people that receive this information whom we can say are a little privileged um these people almost always get this information as last minute so you can imagine um if ever the information could even get to um, someone who's in a marginalized group, right? So basically, um, ways in which the budgeting process can address these needs could be um, having gender responsive budgeting. So governments can adopt gender responsive budgeting techniques to ensure that their budgetary allocations take into account the specific needs and priorities of marginalized communities including women and it basically involves analyzing the impact of the budget decisions on different genders and um, considering gender specific indicators to guide um, resource allocation so for example we could be looking at access to you know water right the 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 the, the needs for, for 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 water they they rather differ with gender right so with you know with either women um and men or between uh, boys and girls simply because of you know of 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 gender roles and or because of nature basically um women go through um their menses and you know there's a lot that it means 20 liters um of water if allocated to a boy and 20 liters equal allocated to a girl 
it is unequal allocation of resources because it is not based on needs so budgeting process therefore they need to have gender responsive budgeting so that it addresses the specific needs of uh, of, of marginalized communities so that gender equality can be achieved at the end of the day much for that response Sharon I guess there is a lot that still needs to be done in making sure that uh, the budgeting processes address the specific needs and challenges faced by marginalized communities talk about the need to invest in education invest in the healthcare system because as the marginalized communities women we are the most affected by this well what initiatives or programs are funded within the budget to promote gender equality and women's empowerment within marginalized communities if there is ever an initiative or a program that is funded within the budget to promote gender equality it is never um specific to marginalized communities women when budgeted for are almost always looked at um, with an umbrella term of just saying this percentage is going to the ministry of women affairs this specific budget is going to small to medium um, enterprises and in small to medium enterprises you find that they are both men and they are women and whenever there is that budget there is never you know a, 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 um, a specific allocation because someone is a woman from a marginalized community it is just you know on 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 on, on, on a general um point of view of saying this is a woman and i think that that is a problem right but however we have seen um women's economic empowerment um initiatives that are funded for by the government where the government allocates funds to support various initiatives which are aimed at enhancing women's economic empowerment right this includes um programs focused on accessing credit um, training capacity building for women um, entrepreneurs and small business owners um, however in 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 this you notice that um there was this fund that was there um which was which was said to to be accessed by women but uh there are certain women that we i don't remember i think it was from the rbz or something like that and there are women who were like struggling to access that specific fund and i can imagine how that was for a woman from a marginalized community i feel like if it were there's there is you know that gap that exists um when you look at women on an umbrella team i think it's it's something that has to be revised and um there are also specific you know women's um women's agricultural support that they get right um and we get a, a little bit of funding just for um just for those farmers um who are women to enhance their access to resources inputs training and markets yes um i think i've seen this uh, happening for women in in certain um rural areas and maybe just to find out Ubuti, what measures are in place to ensure the inclusion and active participation of marginalized community members especially women in 
uh, budget processes. Uh, so to say the 2024 national budget consultations were done virtually and you wonder if women were also part of the consultations especially those who are in rural and uh, marginalized communities basically measures that exist have been put in place by um, civic societal organizations um, because they've seen the gap that exists um, in the budgeting processes therefore to try and address the specific gap they have um, done um, capacity building and training um, for programs for, 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 for these marginalized communities such that they can be empowered at least with information and um, knowledge so that they can effectively engage and participate in in the event that they attend budget consultation meetings and or if they are ever to you know be part of budgeting processes so these include um, budget literacy right so over over a period of time most people have not really like been active in budget making processes not only in the marginalized communities but even you know in the setup of people who are in the middle class you know simply because most of them did not understand the importance of their participation and um outreach programs um which have reached these people have made them aware or have you know raised their consciousness to say they also want to be part of making um they also want to have their views in the budget or to have um their needs be addressed in budgets right so um however same in similarly these outreach programs have also happened in marginalized communities this has been the work of cso's for example zim code to try and make sure that marginalized communities um particularly um women get to voice out uh, or speak to their needs or even participate in budget making processes so that they can shape the budget that comes out at the end of the day because i think um really over time um really there was this huge gap and in the gap um of people not knowing the power that they have in actually shaping the budget um therefore we can say we thank you know most csos in the work that they are doing to try and you know ensure that there is inclusion and active participation of marginalized communities i hope we will make sure that we participate in budget consultations until next time from the girls table don't thank you so much for listening to our podcast until the end please don't forget to follow us on our social media pages go instagram it's there.girls table facebook is the girls table twitter it's table underscore girls and we are also there on youtube where you can get to see our talk shows our podcast uh and a lot of other work that we do as the girls table until next time from me your host begazela mkuni thank you so much Thank you.